Okay, I'm making this video uh, for uh, Fuji X shooters, uh, Fuji uh, rangefinder shooters, uh, XT1, XT10 shooters. Uh, since there is a uh, somewhat gaping void in the uh, the speed light department and the flash the, uh, photography department for uh, Fuji, um, I wanted to set to some information correct because some people are having issues. Um, as far as TTL or auto or manual mode, as it is the case, now while I am new to the Fuji system, I am 25 years deep into Nikon speed lights, flash photography, and studio photography. So ultimately, while it's a different camera and a different platform, speed light stuff, as long as I know what will work and what won't, transfers over as far as my knowledge and being able to help you. Um, I was doing a bunch of research online, and I thought maybe somebody that had been a Fuji shooter for, you know, a year and a half more than I have been, you know, might have uh, come up with some interesting tricks. And as I showed you uh, a week ago that I was using pocket lizards, as I affectionately call them, they're pocket wizards, um, to use um, on my Fuji. Actually, I'll put one on uh, the hot shoe of uh, my Fuji camera, X-T1 or X-T10, and another one Velcroed to a speed light, like I would have right here for uh, wireless transmission. Now, you can use uh, any uh, halfway recent... No, what do you mean by recent? Oh, all the way back to SP22. I have a list in my other video. SP22, SP24, SP26, SP28... Um, 700, 600, uh, SB 800, 900, 910 on your Fuji system in manual or auto mode. You cannot use auto aperture which sends out pre-flashes because there's no communication whether obviously certainly not wirelessly but certainly not still using a uh, SC17 or 28 or 29 which is what this is flash cable between the hot shoe and your camera. Now there is no worry of voltage obviously certainly not so wirelessly but there's no worry of voltage if you use an SC17 28 or 29 uh, cable as far as uh, your Nikon speed light uh, causing an issue of it damaging your Fuji, so that is not a concern. I did find over on the Fuji forum that uh, one of the moderators, and uh, I'd just like to correct him on this, that he says that, for instance, if you're using an SB800, which is applicable to 800 or 900 or 700, that uh, you would actually have to set uh, match your ISO and f-stop shown on the back of the flash unit. Currently, I'm in auto mode, which means that uh, uh, obviously, uh, I'll be using a wireless trigger on top of my Fuji, which I don't have right now. I'll be using one of these in duplicate. That you'd have to set uh, your ISO and f-stop on uh, your speed light to match uh, that of your camera. But that is not true at all. I assure you that's not true. And additionally so, if you're using an SB800, um, you would want to do this, what I'm about to tell you, versus the 910, where you can easily dial in exposure compensation and bump it up a stop for more output. And now how this is sensed on all these speed lights that I gave you a list of is there's a sensor right here, so it causes a cutoff on the flash to quench the light, which is certainly true, but you do not have to actually uh, set the correct uh, f-stop and ISO. Say I'm at f5.6 on my camera here, um, I can set f5.6 and if I have uh, my speed light pointed correctly, of course you do not want to be covering up that sensor. The way I'm holding it right now, you want that uncovered. Of course if you're covering it up and obviously you're going to get an incorrect reading. But you can actually use uh, the f-stop on the back here and also the distance and the ISO to actually change the output and use it like flash compensation. So it is, is incorrect that you need to match ISO and f-stop in your Nikon speed light either wired or wirelessly for your Fuji system. It is also incorrect that you should be using uh, this in SU4 mode. Definitely not. And not in TTL or ITTL mode. That is absolutely not the case at all. You would not want to be doing that. There we go. Let me get it back on here. See, right now I'm in A mode. Well, not right now. Guide number, manual, repeat. There are two what you cannot use this in TTL mode. Any of these Nikon speed lights 28, 700, 800, 900. You can use it uh, in auto mode and you could use it in manual mode for absolute control. Um, but it is not true that you need to match ISO and f-stop on your speed light to match your camera. 
Now you would for proper exposure, but if you need to dial in some compensation, it'll still work as well. I mean, all it's doing is actually um, adjusting for incorrect ISO or incorrect aperture on the speed light, but all that does is it acts like uh, flash compensation. So it's really very simple. So you don't have to do that. Um, another thing too, um, that I forgot to mention in a prior video, and these are plus three transceivers. Now you can buy the uh, cheap junky speed lights, the Young News, or uh, the junky uh, Chinese uh, triggers. You know, some people are on a budget. I understand buying the cheap junky stuff. I do not like to be out in the field and have that uh, the Chinese trash uh, crash on me. You know, twitch and drool like it's having an epileptic seizure. There is something that is irrefutable, and even hardcore cannon shooters will tell you this, that hate Nikon in general, they will also tell you that there's nothing as long-lived and is as reliable as a Nikon speed light. Um, you can buy one of these little suckers, not the 800, but like the SB28 over here, used for about 70 bucks. And even though it's 10 plus years old, it will still long, 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 long outlast that $40 Young New. So for $20 more, you can buy a used Nikon Speedlight and it will still smoke the pants off that cheap Chinese junk that everybody loves to buy. And I say, I'm on a budget. Well, okay, how about this? Spend $20 more and get a reliable speed light that will last much, 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 much longer. Okay, simple logic behind that. I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks that are applicable to any sort of speed light photography. Now, I did mention this before. Now, it was mentioned in, in a Fuji, uh, two Fuji forums and on another board that I won't mention that I was actually showing the use of SC29 flash cable hooked to my Fuji and to my speed light. Not using the wireless triggers. You do not need to use this. Since you're only going to be using the speed light in manual mode or auto mode, you can use the ultra, ultra cheap and extremely well built and incredibly reliable SC17 flash cable. That cable isn't made anymore. That's an old uh, film flash cable, but it is perfect and all you need uh, for your uh, Fuji film and uh, your speed light. That is $15 in awesome condition used on eBay. This is an expensive little sucker. New, it's basically $90 from B&H Photo or $100. You don't need this. Now if you've got like a modern DSLR, this has an infrared uh, output here and uh, you know you don't need that for your Fuji system because you'll only be using manual. Another thing too, on uh, the wireless triggers you don't need to be using plus threes like I'm using because these are $120 or $150 not on sale. You uh, can be using uh, the Plus X's, which is just simply a rather dumb transceiver. It's a dumbed-down version of this, but it's all that anybody uses. And as I was actually web crawling to see if anybody that had been shooting the Fuji system for a number of years had come up with something different, I was actually given some shade. By shade, uh, I mean uh, that's a kind of a colloquialism for insult that I was using... Uh, my uh, Nikon speed lights in uh, manual or uh, auto mode with a uh, wireless uh, pocket lizards. One on top of my Fuji and one attached to my flash. This is perfect too. You can uh, fold the flash out, stick it in your pocket when you need it, bring it out, and it's uh, perfect. But I, heard, I found that I was getting some shade and when I was doing some research I came across something interesting. And it turns out to be that uh, Fuji's own uh, sponsored shooter, the Z-Man. I did some screenshots for you. He, I guess, brilliant minds think alike. We're both fat and tattooed, so maybe fat, tattooed people think alike. <laughs> so, I was going to show you some screenshots. He's doing the same thing that I was recommending you to do. This is Fuji's official shooter. These are screenshots of him in Morocco, I believe. He's using a pocket lizard on top of his Fuji with the 10 to 24, and I think that's a young new. Uh, junkie Speedlight, and that's a Fuji, I mean, excuse me, a Pocket uh, Lizard uh, Plus X uh, transceiver with a cable to it to go to the PC sync. Okay, so he's doing the exact same thing that uh, a few of you out there were giving me shade about, but it's the same thing that Fuji's on shooter. Oh, here's another screenshot of him doing exactly what I told you would be the best thing to do. Now, I cannot tell one thing and one thing only. Is he shooting in uh, manual mode? Or is he shooting in auto mode? But it can only be one of those two. It cannot be any other. 
And uh, since he's doing street photography, I can roll the dice and tell you with 95% certainty that uh, given a fluid situation in street photography, he is using auto mode. Yeah! He's got a pocket lizard on top of his Fuji, another pocket lizard on top of uh, his uh, speed light over here. This is the same thing I've been doing for years with Nikon, and this is exactly what he's doing with his Fuji. Now, all the talk of uh, wireless TTL, wireless TTL, wireless TTL. Well, let me tell you this. You need to step up your game, okay? Same way you need to reason you take your camera out of P mode, puss mode, and start shooting an aperture priority or manual shutter priority. Same thing applies to flash photography. It's not difficult to get your shots right. Oh, look, here I found another screenshot of the uh, official. Uh, and he's a great guy. I'm not making fun of him. All I'm doing is giving you examples that he's doing the same thing that I was telling you to do, but you were making fun of me for doing. But he, are you going to make fun of him? No, he's the official f uh, Fuji photographer. And uh, I love I love his personality. I think he's an awesome guy. He's very funny. Um, he's fat and tattooed like me. I think he's a cool critter. Um, so I'm not insulting him. I'm using him as an example. So doing the same thing I'm doing. He's got a pocket lizard on top of his Fuji with a 10 to 24, and a speed light up here with another uh, plus X, uh, the cheap version of this. This is the plus uh, three, which is 120 uh, bucks, and this is $80 currently on sale, the cheapy, which is all anybody really needs. Do I have any more examples of him doing that? Oh my god, there it is. There's another example of him using the exact same thing that I was telling you to use. Mmm, is there another example? Why, yes, there it is. Well, where is his speed light? Well, as it happens, it's being held by one of his assistants out here at the hand pointing at uh, the folks there. So, oh my god! What I recommended to you is what the official Fuji X shooter is using. Um, and he could be only be using it, not my speculation, because I know pocket wizards and I know speed lights. I might be new to the Fuji system, but I am a guru of speed lights. And I've invented a lot of speed light modification systems, certainly more so than anybody on YouTube, as my prior videos indicate. I've modded speed light so many different ways to Sunday, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm going to show you another cool, really trick. Cool little trick. Something that I use uh, for uh, backlighting. What I'll have is I'll have. Um, a, uh, I'll have a pocket lizard on my camera. It doesn't matter if it's Nikon or Fuji. I'll have one of these in my hand, as you just saw from the pictures and screen grabs I've been doing with Nikon for years. You can do it with Fuji. It doesn't make any difference. I'm using this for a main illumination. And here's a trick. All you Fuji X shooters, get one of these. I've probably got like six of these. This is the cheapy, cheapy Nikon SB23. Why, there is no auto sensor on the front of this thing. How on earth do I use it? There's nowhere to plug in my pocket lizard. Well, there's a neat cord on Pocket Wizard's website. Oh my god, look at that, it's a hot shoe connector. And what you do is you plug that little sucker in there like that. Ta-da! And you know these little funky doodle uh, gorilla pods? What you need to do is get some of these, they're only like two dollars a piece, it's a cold shoe, okay? This takes four batteries by the way. These are really, really, really cheap. Look how complicated the back of that sucker is. And what you do is you slide let me uh, open this up. Oh, it's already all the way open. I'm trying to look through the camera and do this at the same time. Not so easy. There you go. Let me screw that back in there. Ta-da! And what I'll do is uh, I'll take my pocket lizard. I'll plug it in there. I'll dangle it there. And what I'll do, I'll show you in a second here. Okay, I'll stick this behind my subject or a tree. You can actually wrap this around a tree or whatever you want and use this as a secondary light layering system. Really, 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 really cheap. Now this cord, however, is not all that cheap. But since these cheapy, 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 cheapy little speed lights like this are dirt, dirt cheap, and God, these last forever. Why? It's made by Nikon. It's one of the cheapest speed lights Nikon ever made, but it's also a Nikon speed light. And buddy, ain't nothing closer to long, long, long lived than a Nikon speed light. Cheaper than dirt. However, this cable is not that cheap. Um, but it's sold by Pocket Wizard, and it's a hot shoe uh, to uh, uh, a Pocket Wizard uh, uh, Pocket Lizard connector. I think it's like forty dollars. But uh, let me take this out. So there we have it. So as long as you have this little cord here, 
Let me get that out of there. This little cord here. Hot shoe to uh, jack. And this is a little SB23. I can't remember how many of these I've got. I've got a mountain of speed lights. Like I said, my favorite speed light to use, this is an 800 here, which is about $180. Uh, um, used like new on uh, Flea Bay. It's rather big. This one's a lot smaller. This is all you really need. This is the one I recommend. Now, this is the 28DX. Just ignore that. Just get the SB28. Um, has the same uh, um, sensor right there for uh, sensing uh, auto mode. So, just as I showed you uh, the Fuji official shooter, be shooting in manual mode or auto mode. And as I've told you in a prior video, auto mode is damn good. If you can't nail it 95% of the time, in auto mode, then there's something wrong with you. You can't nail it 100% of the time in TTL. All this talk of needing TTL, it's ridiculous. Much less wireless TTL. And now I will be one of the first lazy people to use uh, TTL flash photography with my Nikon system. Either with SC29 cable, which I definitely need for uh, TTL photography, or uh, mounting it on the camera but I would never do that in you know nearly 100% of the cases because that's only for photojournalistic work most important thing you need to do is obviously get your your flash off your camera and nobody wants a speed light as anybody will tell you sitting on the top of the Fuji I mean it is just so horribly misbalanced because this lightweight little sucker you stick any speed light on here no matter how small it is it's just too damn large so everything on the Fuji is definitely got to be off the Fuji so get yourself a, a, a pair of pocket lizards and if you want to layer your light and like use a background light like this and a little uh, Joby uh, Gorilla Pod then uh, get yourself a third one you get the cheap ones and uh, that's it um, I said professional photography I got some super super expensive studio strobes over there they're manual they're manual okay Really, really expensive studio strip. You know, the, oh God, I gotta have TTL. Experience the awesomeness of auto mode with your Nikon speed lights. And uh, I can't reiterate enough. It's like, well, you're a Nikon fanboy. Well, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I'm enjoying uh, screwing around with uh, my three Fujis. Yes, I have two XT ones now and an XT10. I am having a lot of fun messing around with the Fujis, but. When it comes to speed lights, yeah, I have a mountain of Nikon speed lights. I mean, a mountain. But I've got some of them that I am, have been abusing like a redheaded stepchild now for over 20 years. And uh, my premise is, and this logic is undeniable, that you can buy some cheap Chinese junk for 40 bucks, or you can spend $20 more and get one of these that's 10 years old for 60 bucks, and this will still smoke the ass. You know, your, your your cheap Chinese junk will be dead in a year or two or three. You know, hey, it might last four years. This will still be smoking it long past that one's got. So for twenty dollars more, and I don't like crap that dies in the field. And I've had that happen before, and there've not been Nikon speed lights, which is that's why I'll use now. When you're out in the street in the field, and of course you only pack one speed. When it dies on you, that's a serious moment of suck. And uh, I like reliability. Twenty dollars more, you get. A thousand percent better. So all this young, new, cheap Chinese junk speed light stuff. Buy it if you want, but you know, process in your process that in your brain a little bit. I know you're on a budget, but spend twenty dollars more. Okay. Um, but there's some options um, for your Fuji X system and for flash photography. And as I just showed you, Fuji's own official shooter. Um, I didn't even discover that until two hours ago. I was uh, trying to see if somebody else has been shooting with the Fuji system has discovered some unique, mystical, magical uh, combo. And, uh, oh, lo and behold, I ran upon that video and I took a couple screenshots. It's exactly what I was telling you to do. So forget about TTL if you want to get uh, Fuji's official uh, TTL speed light, that's fine. But just remember, it doesn't matter if it's Nikon or that METS uh, flash or the Fuji flash. You know, they're too big to be sitting on top of this little mirrorless camera. You know it and I know it, okay? It just is not meant to be there. And when it comes to wireless, you do not need wireless TTL. You don't need it. Give up uh, hunting down that white whale, okay? Now I know you can buy a Canon uh, coiled cable 
and you can buy that to Fuji uh, Flash and you can get uh, off camera TTL but give it a rest already experience the awesomeness of auto mode with the Nikon speed lights and your Fuji X system thank you so much for watching if you like this video and drop me a buck or two go tell me to jump in a lake um, if I'm lying I'm dying everything I told you here I have tested out personally it all works baby it all works okay and remember too you do not need this I only have it because I've got a bunch of them you do not need this expensive SC29 cable for any of this stuff that I'm talking about you need the cheapy 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 SC17 cable more than enough all you need it's actually tougher made than this it's made in Japan. It's really tough stuff. It's only 15 bucks used like new on eBay. They don't make it anymore, but that's all you need. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.